and welcome back to more Gravity Rush Remastered. Last time, the military unveiled their new super weapon to stop the Nevi, which is now trying to destroy Hexaville. So this time, we're going to tr try to stop uh, Sea Anemone. So uh, a bunch of cores have appeared on it, um, because this thing is actually being powered by Nevi, which was probably not the best plan. It also explains why they were trying to uh, capture Nevi in uh, one of the Special Forces missions, actually. Um, Alright, our Gravity Typhoon is ready to go, so let's try to destroy as many of the cores as we can from up here. Um, the destruction level is slowly climbing. It's heading toward the clock tower. What's it doing? Um, whatever it's trying to do, we have to stop it. So let's uh, destroy this core. And with that, there's only one more core to go. I might stop and pick up this health uh, before we proceed. Um, and from here, it's at the top of the area, so let's fly on up and uh, break this final core. I thought that this thing was supposed to protect the city. Alright, one more hit. So that's why I climbed the clock tower. Things. It's going to blast the city. I have to stop it. Alright. Now, how are we supposed to stop this, though? There are no more cores. It's too strong. I can't even dent it. Well, we have to just keep trying. Don't have any other options at this point. How am I supposed to stop that thing? Cat, tear a hole in space-time. This will be my final act of interference with the dream. Cyanea! Cat, over here! Use your power on me! Anemone is not responding. We have no choice. We must engage the override. Unfortunate, but necessary. Anemone will take Venda Center out when it blows. It's a little early, but consider the population reduction plan to now be in effect. Here's the override switch, Mayor. You might want to at least give them a running start. Beloved people of Hexaville, calmly evacuate the area. Anemone's self-destruct sequence has been activated. Danelica, how could he? What is he doing? They'll never make it away in time. Danelica just signed their death sentence. So we have five minutes to stop uh, Sea Anemone before it explodes. And welcome to the true final boss. We are now able to damage it, like so. Um, so let's quickly try to deal as much damage as we can, um, and try to stop this thing before our, uh, the time runs out. Overall, this is a fairly straightforward final fight. Um, we've already taken out a decent amount of health at this point. 
um, but it's still fairly resilient. Repair is complete. Sea Wasp, returning to active duty. Unica! The Nevi's absorbed an enemy's weapon system. It's too dangerous to get close now. Leave that to me. Just buy some time. Unica, Raven, let's take it down. So at this point, it is now invincible, so we have to kind of stay away from it, uh, because it will do damage uh, if we try to actually attack it. So let's stay a little bit far away, uh, while still keeping it occupied, and hope uh, the others can come up with a plan. Um, leave it to me. That field around Anemone looks dangerous. Um, so Raven is in position, so let's fly on over to her. Uh, luckily, if I'm not mistaken, there should also be health near where Raven is. Can it shield this down? Now's your chance. Do it. All right. So, uh, let's try to quickly. Deal damage before its shield comes back. And it looks like its shield is back, so let's uh, fly over to Unica's position and lure it over this way. So this is kind of like the fight with Nushi in a way. That field around the Nemni looks dangerous. Uh, no kidding! Alright, so it's, uh, shield is down again. Never mind. Um, so let's go back to Raven. But yeah, kind of more like the first fight with Nushi, where we basically have to, uh, lead it to a specific spot, uh, in order to fight it. Cat, let's shield this down. Now's your chance. Actually, let's use our special here. Alright, it still has a little bit of health left, so let's uh, lead it back over here um, and try to finish it off. It seems to be taking the long way around. Now! You only get one chance. Do it! Unica, Raven, leave it to me. Gravity Queen returns, saves the city again. 
Mayor Tanelka hospitalized. Citizens demand resignation. Lost children continue to hibernate aboard Ark. Raven! Raven, how are the children? And Zaza? I'm not sure. They've been asleep ever since they entered the Ark. After coming all this way, I wish there was a way we could wake them. It's my fault. There might have been another way to bring them back. The Ark will guard the children until it is their time to rise. The figments of the dream are coming together to return light to the world. You. That's what someone in a dream told me to tell you anyway. Hmm. Oi! Cat, up for some ice cream? What? No, the shifter couldn't possibly be. Commander, you should be in bed. Everything is under control. Even soldiers need their rest. Perhaps so. This is but the calm before the storm after all. Pardon? and a harbinger of destruction shall descend from on high. The Ark had completed its journey, and the city in the clouds was returning to normal. There were no more Nevi sightings, and the threat seemed to finally be over. As I waited for the lost tribe of children to awaken, I tried my best to enjoy a brief moment of peace. But peace is often fleeting, and some fights never end. And with that, we've reached the end of the story of Gravity Rush. Save post-game completion data, you can continue ex can you can continue to explore the world using this data. Now that Hexaville is at peace, you're free to wander the city to complete any missions you may have left behind. You can also talk to Gade or Cyanea at your home to travel to the past. My reputation seems to be improving. So something popped up in the top right that said travelers in the area, or something like that. Uh, because we still have quite a bit to do. So, if we check the map, uh, we've actually completed everything except the Travelers for uh, Altenor, but we still have quite a few challenges and Travelers to find in the other regions, including Rift Plains, in terms of the Travelers. Um, so yeah, we are far from done. Um, normally I give my thoughts on a game during the credits, but because there is actually still story in the credits, I decided to save my thoughts for now. Um, overall, Gravity Rush is a very charming game. It's not perfect. Uh, I definitely feel like the combat system could have been a little bit more robust. Uh, the camera definitely could use some work. 
Um, but overall, I find the story engaging enough and the gameplay engaging enough. I like a lot of the characters. I do feel like the story speeds up kind of awkwardly at, at a point. Um, like, it kind of feels like the ending was rushed a little bit. Um, it's not too bad, but it does feel like overall the story really picks up the pace at a point. Again, like, barely spending any time in Venda Center before going to Botom, and then, um, basically as soon as you come back to Hexaville, uh, you only have a few more story missions left, um, as set up for the end. So, yeah, overall, the game does kind of speed up at a point. Um, I kind of wonder if the pacing is better in the sequel, given that it's supposed to be a lot longer. Um, or if it, if it might actually be too long at that point. Um, but yeah, I still recommend this game a ton. I think it's a lot of fun to play. It's not too expensive digital. Again, stay away from physical copies unless you have to, um, because physical copies on PS4 are very expensive uh, because of this game's rarity. And I can't speak for the Vita prices, but I assume they're not much better given that game's age on Vita. Um, so yeah, overall, um, there are a few things I'm not a big fan of, but in general, I think Gravity Rush is a very charming and enjoyable game. Um, and yeah, it's nice that we're not quite done yet. Uh, for now, I'm going to keep flying when city collecting gems, but yeah, um, next time we'll start up the next set of challenges, probably, or explore, uh, Rift Plains, so I haven't actually decided what we'll be doing Exactly. Um, but yeah, like, the visuals are really good, and I think hold up really well. Uh, this game is like five years old on PS4, and even older on Vita, and it still looks pretty solid. Again, um, I feel like the art style really helps to hide some of the uh, graphical uh, limitations of designing a game for a handheld. Um, the only real issue with the, the presentation I have is that a lot of the uh, cutscene animation looks very stiff at times, but I do like how the majority of cutscenes use the comic uh, style panels to convey the story instead. That's a better way to convey emotion uh, compared to the in-game models that don't emote as as much or as well. Um, I also don't like how the voice acting, even though it's in a fictional language, it still kind of bothers me that it's very spotty. Um, like, even in some of the last few cutscenes, uh, some lines were voiced and others weren't. Um, which honestly made it a little bit tricky to try to read out unvoiced lines when a lot of random lines are voiced. And also, I've talked about this throughout the playthrough, but the text speed for some of the dialogue is very fast and uh, difficult to read. And it actually gets harder to read when trying to actually read things aloud. Um, so yeah, in general, a lot of things in terms of, like, complaints are very nitpicky. Um, I'm also, uh, I also feel like the game could have tiled back some of the fan service, like some of it really wasn't necessary. Um, yeah, overall, I do think this is definitely a game worth experiencing and is still a very fun game to play. Um, so yeah, uh, overall it's like a solid 8 out of 10 kind of game. I'm looking forward to eventually playing the sequel, most likely not for a Let's Play because of how much longer it is. Um, but who knows, maybe I'll get around to that someday. Uh, for now, let's go to Playajune. And next time we will start to work on completing the remaining challenges. So thank you for watching, and I hope to join you next time for more Gravity Rush Remastered.